will I grow. So live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwishing yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as edict in our destiny, then we must teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross is due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's dove, but by that which knitteth souls and prospers loves, by all the vows that ever men have broken, number more than ever women spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Heart, I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Only your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, then my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Helen, deal. And in the wood where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there Lysander and myself will meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, and pray thou for us. And good luck, grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. Comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out to bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. One turf shall serve as pillow to us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one troth. <laughs> Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet, do not lie so near. <laughs> Lysander riddles very prettily, how much beshrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied, but gentle friend for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty, such separation as may well be said becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid, so far be distant, and good night, sweet friend, thy love ne'er alter to thy sweet life and No word. Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves. They swoon almost with fear. No. Well, then I perceive you all not nigh. Either death or you I'll find immediately. Oh, your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should do thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleeping, or shoes in blood, plunge in the deep, and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I will leave as soon as this whole earth may be bored, and that the moon may through the center creep, and so displease her brother's noontide with antipodes. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart by your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? How good Demetrius wilt thou give him me? You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood. Nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, then tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege. Never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. Prince, thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, bound thine ear. I think it has brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? 
What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander? Oh, me. You juggler. You canker blossom. You thief of love. What? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Why? You counterfeit. You puppet. You puppet. Why so? Hey, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath earned her height. And with her personage, her tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And what? Are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted my Paul? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thy eyes! <laughs> never so weary, never so in woe, be dabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here, will I rest me until the break of day? Heaven shield my sander if they but mean a fray.